Jason Gore from thatshelf.com here in Toronto. I hope everything is well with you, my friend. Great. You have like a like a DJ set up there. What's going on? I love that microphone. <laughs> I just figured having a Dude. microphone that somebody can actually hear us. What what the heck, sir? <laughs> I'm like on some aging MacBook Air that my son gave me. Otherwise, I wouldn't even have a device. Big change. <laughs> well, speaking of air, let's talk about Top Gun, shall we? It's Top Gun Day, May 13th. There we are, my friend. Um, yeah. Now, obviously, it, it's been some time since you were in the film, but I'm just wondering if you could talk specifically about what it was like being not only part of like a juggernaut, um, like the film was, but more importantly, part of a very particular time of 1980s filmmaking, yeah. working with Tony Scott, working with uh, Tom Cruise, all that nonsense yeah. that took place, Val yeah. Kilmer, all the nonsense that was taking place is a very different time. And if you could just let our viewers know what it was like there to be a young actor yeah. within that environment. Exactly. It was completely different. And I, the eighties were, you know, a little bit of a hangover from the 70s, which was a go really one of the golden periods of cinema, the 70s. You think all these great directors and writers who worked in the end of the 70s. And then the 80s come along and it's kind of, it's tilting. And that's when I, I kind of came to Hollywood in, in the late 70s, 79, 78, 79. And I saw a little bit, I met some of those characters from that gener from that decade. And then all of a sudden we're into a whole different thing in the 80s. And then it, gets, then it really goes to, to hell in the 90s. I, I think it really falls apart. But the 80s were pretty good. It was still pretty solid, you know. And uh, I'd worked with Tom in 81 on a film called Losing It for Curtis Hansen, who directed, you know, L.A. Confidential, a great director. And it was kind of a teenage romp. And so that's how I started the 80s in 1981 uh, with Tom in a little teen, teen flick that was maybe his worst performing movie of all time. John mm -hmm. Sacco, who plays Cougar, was also in that movie. Jackie Earl Haley and a few other characters, but the eighties had some really good actors, you know, for young talent. And, uh, and you see it, a lot of them kind of repeat them, you know, the, the cast kind of repeated themselves a bit. I did five movies with Bill Paxton, I'll tell you. Right. So, you know, three with Michael Bean and, and a couple with Tom there. And, and, uh, and it was kind of interesting to kind of hook up, you know, these different movies, these different genres with the same actors and then you know along comes top gun in 80s in the middle of the decade and who would have known but I, I i had a bit of an inkling because tom was really he was he was taking off after risky business and whatnot and uh and the movie was well written and the the direction tony scott just incredible and great producers and a, a really fine cast i mean uh, tim robbins in a bit part you know I mean, there's, if you look at the cast, Meg Ryan, her, her, de, her debut, you know? So it was really kind of, it, it kind of sums up the decade in a way as a high point. This is probably a strange question, but certainly not an original one. Um, I look at Val Kilmer and I look at Tom Cruise as two people that were probably prettier than they were as performers. That yeah. they were they were sidelined into being these sort of handsome leading men, but both of them were remarkable performers. Just wondering if you could talk about the eighties was definitely an era. The seventies was where you got the gritty guys. You got all the guys like showing up, and it didn't matter necessarily, quote unquote, what they looked like. It was what they showed on the screen. Whereas the eighties was very much about gloss, was very much about image. But on the other hand, you had some people that were absolutely bringing the work there. If you could talk about yeah. that dynamic, about about in some ways these what what changed about being a leading man at that era? Yeah, I, that's, that's an interesting question. Um, you know, I think of Tom and like Taps. Uh, I think of, of Val like in Top Secret. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he did some, uh, that's, he, that's really a, a fine performance, Top Secret. He's really, he really, Val may be the best actor of the generation in, in some ways. And maybe Tom, the biggest star, certainly. But Tom really had, he has the chops. I mean, look at Born on the Fourth of July. Hmm. You look at some of the stuff, I mean, Color of Money. I mean, it's funny, he was, we wrapped Top Gun and he went off to do work with Paul Newman and I went off to work with Robert Duvall, hmm. who was like my, one of my big idols. And I got to do a movie called Let's Get Harry with him, which was Stuart Rosenberg directed it. He did Cool Hand Luke and he was like an old school director. And that was a lot of fun. I became really, really close with Duvall and, and, uh, but you know, we, it was fun to be able to reach back and work with some of these this older generation too, because they were really schooling us in a lot of ways. And I think you know the smarter actors of the day were really picking up on it. I mean, Val went to Juilliard as a teenager. He was he had all the bona fides, 
And he had, he kind of carried that, you know, is like a badge, but, uh, but he had his insecurities too, but he really could like, I mean, he was in my kitchen uh, doing Hamlet for 20 minutes. And I had to just like throw the knife down and say, see, I got to stop. You know, he was trying to learn his lines, you know, but th th there was a lot of intensity and there was a lot of, you know, we were all kind of coming of age and we all wanted to, you know, grab the brass ring and, you know, a lot of competition and we were all reading for the same parts. And, you know, you had the list was around Hollywood, you know, who's on the list, who gets to get the audition, who gets to get the meeting, who gets, you know, shine. So it was an interesting time. Thank you so much. I know we got to wrap, but thank you for Streets you know, of Fire. Streets of Fire, great. What a great bunch of music in that film. And what Walter Hill and old Diane Lane and oh. Michael, Michael Perret was great. I mean, there was some, you know, all that doo-wop. I mean, what a bunch of great filmmaking. And, you know, where, what happened to that movie? It should have been a huge... It should have, you know. Hey, listen, thanks for your time. Thanks so much. We could talk forever. <laughs> Next time you're in Toronto, we'll hang out. We'll nerd out about movies, my friend. Super. Love talking to an aficionado. It's great. All the best. Take care. Have, thank yeah. you so much. Take care. Bye.